I'm Brittany Lewis with Forbes Breaking News. Senator John Barrasso blamed worse than expected inflation hikes on the Biden administration on the Senate floor Wednesday. According to a report released Wednesday by the Labor Department, prices in June rose 9.1 percent year over year. The jump marks the largest 12-month increase in 40 years. A recent Monmouth University poll found 42 percent of Americans are struggling to remain where they are financially. Knowing that the economy is top of mind for voters, GOP lawmakers have pointed the finger at the Biden administration's economic policies for rising costs. Listen in for more from the Wyoming Senator. Madam President. A senator from Wyoming. Well, thank you, Madam President. First, I'd like to associate uh, myself with the remarks of the distinguished senior senator from North Dakota who spoke so well about the issues that are facing the American people, both in terms of inflation and in terms of energy. Uh, so I join my colleagues today on the floor to talk about this crisis that we're facing under the presidency of Joe Biden and the Democrats in this body. We found out this morning that inflation hit another record high, a 40-year high, and we are now entering a summer of suffering by the American people, suffering brought on by the Democrats and their reckless spending and policies. The inflation numbers themselves are shocking, but the impact on families is so, so disturbing. In my home state of Wyoming, the people that normally volunteer to drive meals to shut-ins on Meals on Wheels, who run some of those rural routes and drive around and drop off meals, these are volunteers, time on their hands, senior citizens who do the driving. They're no longer able to do it because they cannot afford the gas under Joe Biden and the Democrat policies. The day Joe Biden came in office, gas was 238 per gallon. Plenty of volunteers paying their own gas. Today, the price is almost double what it was when Joe Biden came into office. And that's what the American people are seeing, pain at the pump and pain at the grocery store. And the numbers are disturbing. And people are further, falling further and further behind. Inflation is up 9 percent. Wages are only up 5 percent. So that gap is growing and people are hurting. Doesn't seem the president even understands it or can conceive of it. But that's who we have representing the people in the White House today. Over the last four months, working families have paid the highest gas prices in American history. The price of natural gas has also tripled since the day Joe Biden took office. In total, the average American family paid an additional $1,000 last year just for energy compared to the year before. And this year, it's going to be a lot worse. Now it's the summer. Most of America is facing the real possibility of blackouts. Two-thirds of Americans are likely to face energy blackouts. That's not me saying it. It's the energy specialists who analyze where the energy is coming from, how much is needed, and where it's going. During a summer heat wave, blackouts threaten people's lives. To the climate purists and elitists and extremists who are running the administration, they don't seem to care. So why is it happening? America still has plenty of energy, best energy anywhere in the world, and the most. We have some of the largest energy reserves anywhere. States like Wyoming, where I'm from, sitting on a gold mine of energy. The Biden energy crisis is a direct result of the administration's energy policies. From the day Joe Biden took office, he has waged an all-out war on American energy. Killed the Keystone XL pipeline, actually bragged about the fact that he did that on his first day in office. He stopped exploration of oil in Alaska, bragged about it. It's not something he tried to hide. Oh, he bragged about the fact that he was going to go to war with America. American energy was in his targets. Joe Biden has raised the cost to produce energy on federal land by 50 percent. This is the largest increase in what they call the royalty rate in a hundred years. A hundred years. Does Joe Biden understand that? Does he know that? Does he care? As people are suffering all around the country? It's no wonder we're still producing 1.1 million barrels of oil fewer 
today than we were at the beginning of the pandemic. Joe Biden refuses to do the things that would work. He refuses to produce more American energy. What did the administration say about that? What did the economists say? This is the cost of the liberal world order. This is the price we have to pay for the liberal world order. That's the White House's statement. I don't even know people that talk that way anymore, but that's what we got coming out of this White House and this president who today, this very moment, is heading to Saudi Arabia to beg for oil when we have it right here. It's more than, dis it's more than disturbing, it's disgraceful. That's what we have with the President of the United States today. So now what's happening? Joe Biden's throwing another Hail Mary pass, hoping that something happens. His Hail Mary passes are uncatchable. Since November, Joe Biden has released more oil from our strategic reserve than any president in American history. It's a strategic petroleum reserve. It's designed to be there for emergencies. He's releasing it because he's trying to bring down the cost of oil and the cost of gas, and he caused the problem. There's not an emergency. This is a Joe Biden-caused problem. But previous presidents only used the strategic reserve during wartime or after natural disasters. But Joe Biden is spending down our savings to pay for his anti-American energy policies. Seems to be proud of it. Well, gas prices are still near record highs. Let's recap. The day Joe Biden came into the White House, $2.38 a gallon. Today, many places over $5 a gallon, on average $4.60 a gallon. And the peak summer driving season isn't even here yet. Today, the strategic reserve is at the lowest level since 1986. So what if there's a real emergency? Then what do we do? Yet this last week, we found out that some of this energy, the oil that he's reserved, a million barrels of oil, went to an energy company owned by the Chinese government. Thank you, Mr. President. Surrender to China. Give it to him. Joe Biden is sending our oil to China in the middle of an energy crisis that he created. So on Monday, Joe Biden's national security advisor practically admitted that Joe Biden is going to beg the Saudis to sell us more oil. He left for Saudi Arabia last night, and he is going as a weakened president. He wrote an editorial in the Washington Post about why he was going. I'll tell you how he's going. He's going as a weakened president, weakened at home and weakened in the eyes of the world. Rather send oil to China and money to the Saudis than let us use the energy we have right here in the United States, in the ground, where we do it in the finest environmental ways compared to the rest of the world, and we have the energy workers who know how to do it. What is he thinking? At the same time, astonishingly, Joe Biden decided to spend around time around the 4th of July tweeting threats to gas stations. Mom and pop run little gas stations in our communities and our neighborhoods. This is basic economic illiteracy. Prices aren't set by the local gas stations. Prices are set by supply and demand. If you want low prices, you need more supply, more American energy. Prices may have ticked back a little bit now because people cannot afford to drive. They can't afford to fill their tanks. Cannot afford to fill their tanks gas station the other day in Casper, Wyoming, and talked to a couple, and he said, I have $100. That's as far as I can go. Can only fill $100 worth. Can't fill the tank. See how much gas I get. What have we come to? And Joe Biden brags about killing the Keystone XL pipeline, which would have brought over 800,000 barrels of oil a day to the United States. And he killed it day one in office and bragged about it. Democrats in the Senate are now proposing to make the Biden energy crisis even worse. Senate Democrats in this very body, this very room, are talking about raising taxes on energy production. 
This is going to raise energy prices for half of the households in America. It will raise prices for thousands and thousands of businesses. Higher prices will get passed on to customers. Democrats pass another reckless tax and spending bill, and it looks like they're all lined up to do it, save one or two. Inflation is going to get much worse, and working families will be paying more. If I were one of those Democrat senators and on the ballot this November, I would be shaking in my boots, knowing that the people of my state are mad at me for adopting policies that are hurting them directly in their wallet. So what they're talking about, $300 billion uh, for more of the old Green New Deal. It's going to give more power to the climate alarmists, the climate elitists, the climate extremists who run the Democrat Party and are running it into the ground. The professional climate activists will never be satisfied, Madam President. The activists will never stop. You can never go far enough for them. They weren't satisfied a year ago when they started this inflation crisis, and with the liberal world order, they will never be satisfied. The professional activists want energy prices to remain high. They're happy with $5 gas. They want to punish us for using fossil fuels. Joe Biden and his advisors keep telling us about this incredible transition. I call it an incredible transition. Well. Ask people around the country in your home state to transition to a crisis, transition to higher prices, transition to a lower quality of life, pain at the pump, pain at the grocery store. It's been a transition to stress for working people, families who feel stuck and squeezed. Democrats don't change their energy policies. Oh, there's going to be an incredible transition. It's going to be a transition of power right here in Washington this November. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor.